Now, I, along with the others in the media, were uh, somewhat surprised when uh, Nick Dawes announced that he was uh, stepping down as editor-in-chief of the Mail and Guardian to join the Hindustan Times in New Delhi as chief content and editorial officer. So what is behind the move and how does he leave the state of journalism in South Africa? He joined Mags on Media earlier in the week. So why is he leaving arguably one of the best jobs in journalism in South Africa? Well, it is the best job in media in South Africa, um, and I've, I've really enormously enjoyed working at the Mail and Guardian. It's, it's a bit of a cliche, but I love going into work every day. I work with some fantastic people, and I think we are taking the Mail and Guardian to a place where it's really going to be relevant in a digital future, and as well as in, a, in an increasingly complex political and social landscape for South Africa. So that's huge, huge fun. And I don't think I would take any other job in South Africa as, as an editor right now. But this opportunity in India is a really pretty remarkable one. The scale of India as a, the world's largest democracy, the complexity of the story that's happening there, the, the character of the growth that's going on there, and then a newspaper which has a circulation of 1.5 million copies a day. I was trying to do the maths. It's <laughs> roughly double the entire print circulation of yeah. South Africa. No small job that you've got ahead. Let's talk about the job uh, that you're going to do in just a moment, but all, in t all totaled um, nine years at the Mail and Guardian. I think reporting the South African story has perhaps got a lot harder. You would admit that. Um, in what way? The South African situation mm. has become more complex, for starters. Uh, we're much deeper into our transition now the social fractures are becoming much less simple. So it's not simply a story of how white people are doing or aren't doing vis-a-vis -vis how black people are doing or aren't doing. Government performance is very different in very different sorts of places and we're maturing as a country. So it's got harder and that's good. It's good that it's more complex. It's good that it's not a story that's reducible uh, to mm. black and white, literally. At the same time, you know, the capacity of the press to respond to those changes has to really grow. All of that happens, of course, in the context where our industry is changing all around the world. So you're really riding uh, several horses at the same time. As where the is the capacity deficit, do you think? Well, I think that it's at a whole range of levels. Firstly, you know, there are basic issues about people's ability to bring really strong journalistic skills, classical journalistic skills, uh, to bear, whether at the level of reporting or sub-editing mm. or, or, or at my level, editing. But then there's also the availability of resources to really do justice to a story on this scale in a very rapidly changing, and this is crucial, very rapidly changing media environment. Mm. Um, we're seeing profound circulation declines in most of the South African print media. The industry at large hasn't figured out how to be relevant to a very different looking audience and an audience that consumes news very differently. Are they engaging sufficiently with that debate, do you think? I think some people are, mm. and we're seeing, we're seeing some new initiatives mm. starting to happen across the sector. Um, I think others are whistling past the graveyard, to be honest. Do you get frustrated sometimes that as a, as a, as a newspaper with a, an incredible investigative heritage that you break stories week in and week out, but little changes, the transgressors still stay in their job, that sometimes, uh, you know, to extend the metaphor, you know, you're, you're whistling in the wind, not necessarily past the gravestone? That's a discussion that we mm. have a lot. Um, does it mean anything mm. to do what we do? And I really feel very strongly that it does. Firstly, sometimes we do produce the Big Bang effect. Um, you know, we had a story about Petro SA a couple of weeks mm. ago, which caused very high-profile resignations uh, almost immediately. Um, in the case of Jackie Salibi, the Mail and Guardian sure. broke that story mm. in 2006. A couple of years later, he was sentenced to 15 years in jail. But there are also more subtle effects that um, accountability through the press has, and that's an effect of containment. And I, could, I couldn't count on two hands the number of times people have told me stories about someone saying, don't do this if you don't want to be on the front page mm. of the Mail and Guardian. Um, it's a nice validation of your position, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really think that accountability isn't always mm. a straight line. Um, that said, of course, we have much wider problems of accountability in our country, and the media is only one part of that uh, accountability infrastructure. Uh, so the rest of it needs mm. to be working as well. Um, the prosecuting authority needs to work, parliament needs to work, uh, the political process needs to work. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of editing a newspaper. How much of an editor's personality is reflected in the paper that they run? I think that varies from paper mm. to paper. Um, and the institutional character mm. of different papers influences that a lot. So how much either inertia on the one hand mm. or rich institutional heritage is there um, impacts the extent to which 
an editor's personality reflects. Mm -hmm. Of course, whether the editor is the kind of person who imposes their personality um, also has an impact. What but, was your style? Well, I was pretty involved, um, and, and I remain pretty involved and will until September. I don't leave the process entirely to the people I work with, although I work with excellent people who have brilliant ideas. But I'm quite closely involved in making the choices about how we angle things and how we, ca how we, how we capture stories. But at the same time, the Mail and Guardian does have an extraordinary mm. institutional culture. So I can put a little bit of a spin on that, and I can try and move it in a direction in terms of digital news and that sort of thing, which I think will, will carry those values of the M&G into a new format. Um, but I've been quite careful to not make the M&G my soapbox. Mm. So I haven't uh, had a weekly column, for example, because I think it's important that the voice of the paper mm. rings clearly. Do you still get a buzz, though, as, as a newspaper man with, you know, to, to, to use another cliche, with the old ink running through the veins there, uh, on, a, on a Thursday night or a Thursday morning when you're sitting behind the computer and you, you, you're, you're crafting words, you're re-angling the story, you're, 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 you're looking for the killer headline? Oh, there's nothing better, mm. Jeremy. I mean, I think that's why we do what we do. Mm. It's an extraordinary privilege, mm. firstly, to get to participate in the national discourse at that level. It's an extraordinary privilege to work with brilliant journalists and get the best that you can out of their work. And to watch the effects ripple across the landscape is a, is a tremendous thrill. And of course, if you add the adrenaline spike that mm. comes with a deadline, um, which is something that print still imposes, um, yeah, you have, a, you have a recipe for a pretty exciting mm. life. And what about that sinking feeling uh, sort of Friday lunchtime when, uh, you know, the calls of, of rage and complaint come up? Suppose that's uh, part of the job as well, is yeah, it? Or do, you, or do you leave that to your lawyers? No, I'm lucky when they come <laughs> at lunchtime. It's the ones that come at six in the morning that really... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about the deliverables of an editor? Um, they, they have changed. Uh, there's more economic pressure. Have you been forced to become more commercially minded? Or do you have the luxury of not doing that? Um, I'm going to give a slightly complicated mm. answer to that. On the one hand, I think editors nowadays, because the changes that are going on in the business impact deeply on the kind of journalism that we do. And I don't mean commercial pressure in the sense that um, an advertising person will walk over to my office and say, let's kill this story, or why are you going so hard on our client? That, at the Mellon Guardian, that never happens. We have an extraordinary degree of protection mm. from that kind of commercial pressure. Um, and, and Trevor Nube is absolutely committed to it. He's also committed to giving the space to produce good enough quality across the board to, to sustain mm. our, our, our commercial success uh, through good editorial. But at the same time, as a journalist nowadays, if you're not aware of what's going on in the business, if you're not aware of what's happening in the digital space, you actually can't really function as an editor. So I think you, you need to be very well insulated from the commercial pressure to water down your journalism, for example. Um, but you have to be absolutely engaged with the deep changes that are happening in the news business. And frankly, I think that's a good thing. If you look back on the nine years, is there one story that stands out, either as, as a reporter or as, 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 as the person in charge? For me as a reporter, mm. I, I think it has to be the Jackie Salibi story, mm. a story which when we broke it, nobody believed. Mm. And, and as I say, a few years later, he was in jail. And Look its tendrils happened. reached so mm. wide, Brett Kebble deep into government, into the prosecuting authority. As editor, I think it's really been a combination of some of the very strong work that our team has done around the business interests of President Zuma and his family. But equally importantly, building this platform for the M&G as a, as a multi-platform digital product that really lives out there with its readers, that isn't a weekly newspaper anymore. Uh, that's a very, very highly engaged uh, news provider. Nick Dawes, outgoing editor of the Mail and Guardian. You can share your views on the newspaper and his observations on our Facebook page on this address. Coming up on the programme, how the Joe Public Advertising Agency continues to clean up in local awards. News that moves. ENCA.com.